There are two main fruits to define a prophet in Scripture. First and foremost, when a prophet declared a new doctrine he was given from the Lord, it was meticulously verified in the established scriptures previously penned by Moses or other prophets so as to see if the new light of doctrine being presented contradicted any of the light of truth that was already penned in the inspired word of God. If it did contradict, then that man was declared a false prophet. But if it was in perfect agreement with the light of doctrine already penned in the Holy Writ, then it was added to the inspired books as divine words of God. That's how the Bible actually grew from the five books of Moses to the prophesied 66 books we have today. What we see in Isaiah 8.20 actually confirms this as the biblical method of verification in how all this was done. For it clearly says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, It is because there is no light in them. The other way to define a prophet is by taking into consideration something a prophet declared God said regarding a future event. But if that which the prophet declared did not come to pass, then again he was declared a false prophet. What we see in Deuteronomy 18.22 is the basic method of exposing the false prophet, wherein it clearly says, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. And in Ezekiel 13, 7 it says, Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken? As I shared in my Many False Prophets video five years ago, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 11, that many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many in these last days. That being the case, and if you're an obedient child of God, seeking to please your King Jesus, if the Lord is revealing to you some strange issues in the message of your pastor, then you must ask yourself, is your pastor one of these many false prophets that Jesus warned us about that would be the norm in today's churches. Well, the easiest way to find that out is by simply asking your pastor about certain strange prophecies or doctrines that, as expected, have become very popular in most churches today. But before asking him to explain what he preaches, please check out the studies or even the videos you now see appearing on screen to see exactly what the Bible says in these key areas that easily expose these false prophecies and doctrines so that you can help your pastor see the need to repent. But be forewarned that if you come to him with only an idea that he's in error, without the truth in heart or in hand, as 1 Peter 3.15 says is the norm for obedient Christians, He may twist additional scriptures to confuse you so as to defend himself, or worse yet, belittle the inspired verses that you know to be actual Bible truths to again defend himself. Well, having rock-hard Bible verses to share that he cannot deny will allow for the truth you present to be that much more powerful towards cutting his heart onto repentance. You may actually win a soul to Christ, who is a leader in the faith, and he can then bring more souls out of danger. As Revelation 18 verses 1 to 5 says, the obedient remnant people of God will do in these very last days. However, if your pastor is a false prophet and unable to use the Bible to confirm his message, then please don't be afraid to warn others of what the Word of God proves concerning him and his message. For the reality here is, the Lord opened your eyes to a false prophet, which means he is trusting you to do your duty, according to 1 Timothy 5, verses 19 to 21. You need to alert as many as you can regarding that fallen pastor and the Bible truths he refuses to teach or even preach. The basic reality here is, the Lord your God would never have had Paul write those words to Timothy 2,000 years ago if it wasn't extremely important for all of us to do as he declared. Now, as we have seen over the last few years in the SDR movement that have left their fallen churches to join God's remnant people to do the final work in the 11th hour of Earth's history, have discovered their pastors were unable to answer their Bible questions or even refute the verses they gave that proved the truth in the Bible was not something their pastor could see or even understand. The reason these false teachers and pastors refuse to answer is because the only way to understand Bible doctrine, or prophecy for that matter, is to obey the God that wrote it. 
And so again, before approaching your pastor, please check out the studies and or videos you see appearing on the screen right now. And just so you know, you don't need to do all of them right away. Just one or two for now will help you gain all the evidence you need to step out in faith and obedience to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, that Revelation 14.4 says the obedient remnant bride of Christ will do in these last days. When you see your pastor unable to answer your simple Bible questions, or worse yet, actually twisting verses to defend his apostate position, then the choice is all yours at this point. And so you got to ask yourself, do you stay in his apostate church, or do you follow Jesus Christ? I mean, after all, is it not written in Acts 5.29 that we ought to obey God rather than men? All the studies you're seeing on screen are for the most part also in video as well. And yes, I placed all the links to them in the video description. And if you need any additional help in presenting such truths to your pastor or anyone else for that matter, please don't be afraid to contact anyone in the SDR movement to help you so that you can help another soul out of danger and into the arms of our loving Savior and our eternal King, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. God bless.